I'm looking forward to share his knowledge. I'm happy to have him here, David Odenthal. Well, thank you very much, Aaron. That was super. Great. Thank you. Wow. Uh, what a crowd. First time I'm here on the Shopware Community Day, and I'm thrilled and I'm excited. Applause to the whole team of Shopware. It's a great event. Before we will start with the seven tips I would like to give you, I would like to make you of one thing, aware of one thing. You're organizing a party. You invite 100 people and only three show up. Well, not a good thing. It's a very small, intimate party. So thus, we start our journey to conversion. Maybe, first of all, I should introduce myself, as you do, David Odal. I've got two children, seven and three. I come from the Bergischen region, which is close to Cologne, not where the seven little dwarfs are, but it's similar. So maybe on myself. I've almost said everything. I do have a magazine overhead shop house, and then I have editing houses and a lot of shop operators. And my desire is to optimize the conversion and the growth marketing. How can we as shop system owners have more performance? What is interesting for all of us in the first step, how do I get traffic? I do need multi-channel strategies, SEO, what a lot of agencies talk about, which we very question, anorganic reach. But what is very important, what will happen with the user on the page? That is conversion. That's what we understand by conversion. He wants to buy. He or she wants to buy. Maybe. Then there is this altruism. A good shop is a shop which sells. The author was very prudent. It's clear this is why we do it. And so that we understand how it all works, I would like to take you on a journey. How a visitor is surfing on your website, where do I place content, and how can I control the perception of the user? I don't want to be theoretical, but also practical. So. Maybe in front of the computer you've got Tante Gerda, Aunt Gerda. She wants to buy something. And now you have got a search line, and she types something into Google. She will get onto a website, and maybe she um, wants to uh, buy a house and WP, w, WP, WPC um, terrace fa, um, fa, um, tiles. So three know them, wooden plastic composite, you will put onto your terrace or in the garden is very weather resistant. And we will hear about this product a lot. I don't want to sell it to you, don't worry. But Tante Gerda, Aunt Gerda wants to buy it. So according to SEO, she gets a lot of information and she needs to solve her problem. She wants to buy the product. She can't do it because she's only getting information and then leaves. Just like in a lot of um, cases, opens a tab and looks at the different prices and from the product of a shop she sees. 97% of all the users won't buy. The 100 we invite, three will come. We have a conversion rate on average by 3% worldwide. And with a lot of shop systems, even less, there are only very few which go up. We have to do things better. So three methods. One, search engine optimization. 200 different factors have to be used in order to let us grow organically. Traffic, search engine advertising, all that what we know, what you've been doing already. The most recent thing is in marketing, content marketing. So what we market as content with a better quality, audiovisual topics we want to control to make it more tasteful to the user, to have a better quality, to make it more interesting. And I've got a video of a DIY store which does it perfectly.
live and feel it. Now and here. Can you feel it? WPC terrace tiles, the latest trend. And women look at them, and men have to work with them. So this is how it is done. We have an emotion which is included in the video. There's an interest in a product in another way. If we find that on a website, we will, would be willing to buy because we feel well and we've got the same emotions like the ones expressed in the shop. It's a type of communication, a digital communication happening. The third step is the rational, emotional controlling of the process. And Gerda, who has put something into the Google search and is just about to buy something or not. On her way to make her buy, there are quite a lot of small and big gaps where you have to wonder what are the barriers, the hurdles. So that's happened to me in real life. It's nothing to do with shops, but it's the same. I looked at uh, the bank's business accounts, and I look at the websites organically and looked at the product comparison business accounts from this bank, and then let's compare the prices. And this is what shows up. Suitcases? Do I have to carry my money in a suitcase? And the second from the left was interesting for me. And my first reaction was, what does the suitcase have to do with the package I want? So where can I actually buy? Where is the contact button? So what I see first, this is my perception. I was so courageous and have a look at the search volume, five to 600 people. What would have happened if we really had motivated them to buy? And these are the normal obstacles Aunt Gerda has got when she's surfing in a shop. And how can I control the conversion, the perception of the user in a better way? And let's have a quick look. It's a conversion funnel, fairly easy. Traffic goes in up to the, to the bottom. And then we in an online shop have to understand what the user actually does in the different steps. Maybe the listing on the detailed page of the merchandise. A lot of people think of the checkout process. But at the front, we've got the users who leave. We have to understand why they are leaving there. I can tell you a lot of things about how nice it is. So real life in one topic, the smart uplift principle or the strategy behind it. And this is what I use. I've got seven steps which I constantly use from conversion into optimization. I also work as a consultant. So I will first of all have a look at the original concept. And step seven, what about cooperation? It's a seven-tier rocket. First advice, define a concept very clear. And on this concept, you want to sell you have to build around that a campaign, a terrorist tile. Not all the products on the website, but one which is the center, the focus, and this is what you can buy. I've got description and I've got special prices and a very clear navigation structure. That is helpful. Perception, cognitive perception, and what we see as something like thinking about it, what is happening in your head. Just a case, you have got an AdWords advertisement and uh, to bring you to a landing page on a detailed page of a merchandise as it fits. Two possibilities, the user buys or buys not. And I did that by using an example of one shop. I looked for summer tires, car tires by Continental. It was summer, you need tires. And then I thought, what kind of brand? Continental. And somebody from the online shop here, I spent the money for the AdWords advertisement. And I went to the first entry and arrived here. And this is what they showed me. Back here, Continental summer tires. Simply order them with invoice. And this is what my expectation is. And I end up here, in for fast to get to the right product. 
And if you can work with that, Continental sum, Summer Tires. Here you can order by invoice quickly and choose your product, a summer tire. It's, it's not any tire which will do on Q5. You first of all have to configure it, of course. But the cognitive uh, work starts with the wording, what I perceive, what I see f at first glance. Second point, what I see very often is the sliders. Who works with sliders? Hands up. Hardly anybody shows his or her hand. Yes. Sliders are conversion killers. And that has been for a long time. What does that mean? We are on a starting page, and I want to show my whole merchandise assortment. and. What actually does the user perceive? He had a certain intention with his starting page. We don't know. If we do a campaign and we say product B will cost X, Y, Z, like the terrace tile or the word to mouth marketing, recommendation marketing in German, you can say, colleague said, buy this product. The WPC tile has to be shown and not any kind of laminate. Um, any other product. So this cognitive work is too much. I can moan a lot, and criticism is one thing, but how can I do things better? This is an example of a wireframe which I developed. You don't see the price. It's an example. It's a very clear-cut structure, very clear, well-structured information, and a call to action. Buy me. Of course, with a price, maybe at a bargain price even. So the question is, what sort of product will you buy with which you have most of the buyers? A lot of shops will sell their bargains, but it's a different product which will give you more return. So you have to prioritize. Slider are only user, useful if I put them on the product page. On the product page, you've reached a stage. It's about the WPC terrace tile. And you can say it's an understructure from aluminium, PVC, wood, whatever. So it's a lot you have to watch out for with the tiles. But this is something I could do on that web on that page. So for everybody. So the energy of data, web analysis is your friend. Google Analytics, if you use that a lot, it's OK, but you can have in-depth knowledge. For example, the user figures will give you a lot of um, information, what the users do on the website and what the journey is like. You've got KPIs and indicators, two different things. One will show you how many sales. It's the key performance indicators. The other things tells you the resting time, how much time they spend there. And I've taken out the top four one and the return rate and so on. You are the experts. I don't have to explain that to you. To actually go into depth of that information gives you the information what the users do on the subpages, on one individual subpage, the ones you would like to optimize, for example. Fourth advice, motivate your users. There are two types of motivation, intrinsic motivation extrinsic motivation. Extrinsic is the price bargain. Intrinsic means I'm convinced I want to buy. And you can do that by using a simple usability. There are a lot of reams you can buy with shopware to divert from the standard and also to focus on usability. I would test them. And then it increases the convenience. The product I want to sell is something which would have to make people convenient. So if you want to buy a settee, it has to be looking um, very comfortable. So there is Amazon, where a lot of people buy because they're convinced, because it's easy, and because they're used to it. We will build things which will then use the user journey, which makes it for them easy to come back. It's a time or it's a type of convincing people to buy. So I sometimes see myself to go to back to Amazon 
um, because it makes it easy for you and you feel comfortable. Extrinsic motivation, good deals, and the shop where there is a plug-in rewards where you can get points which you can bring into the shop. It's interesting for the gentleman here, by the WPC terrace tile, you get 1,000 points. But what do you get when you reach the 1,000 points limit? You need this kind of hunting inst instinct. And deals in the checkout process, you can go in the checkout process. Do you know if you get this bonus in, this code, you will get a discount, and people from the leaving from the user journey are going on to My Deals and Co. and get the kind of code. I can see the overview of all the different codes, Amazon, for example, and then they're leaving again. So they will stop the purchase, and this is a killer. So work on this website with, for example, bonuses. So to lead people into the checkout. So by using these vouchers, so how do I use a motivation extrinsically, intrinsically, buyer persona, who is it? Aunt Gerda, 35 years of age, and then you say, I want to buy. I've got a fictitious person who wants to buy something. Then I know my target group. Craftspeople want to buy that. How can I mix it best? Just an example for Planeo. I love DIY. You must have realized by now. So this is a very simple design which I've made with nice colors, warm colors, but I looked into what are the topics which are important. What is the price? And then I used the WPC tiles because these kind of topics are important. I know that it's not because I used dials, I used vinyl tiles. So what does a package cost and per meter? It has to be as simple as possible to understand. Price per package, quantity. So the meters you need, one package for 1797. So where do the 599 come from? It's per meter. So this is you have to have in the back of your mind. And when you do it yourself, so what is the waste? The waste is automatically included. There's always waste. Those who are perfect, please tell me you can do it in my home. So into the shopping cart. So what we also tested, and you then go into the shopping cart and leave things at there. I go into footer, and I see all the information how to buy things. And why don't we simply say, let's take this abbreviation. You can you buy like with these methods of payment. It's a thing of trust. And then the trigger is it's easier and I don't have to go into scroll depth. Also, I brought you an example from a classical shop. Of course, you can do it that way as well. A classical template expanded by a plug-in. But this raised the question a top purchase it says here but I haven't purchased yet but then again that's another piece of motivation below the basket be below my uh, my shopping cart that's great and we all love seals of approval trusted shop etc seals of approval like the CE seal of approval the TÜV in Germany the Germans love seals seal of approval so that helps as well another example the session timeout my wife and myself were sitting in front of the TV <laughs> I know. I know what you mean. Yes, you'll be familiar with that. And you look at the TV, you have advertising. We have a little uh, kid and they walk down stairs and tend to tumble and fall. So we thought we'll buy protection. She puts it into the uh, uh, shopping cart. Oh, the film starts again. The advertising break is over. By the way, Google Analytics says that at night when people watch TV, the uh, number of transactions increases, by the way. Session timeout. If you wait for the next ad break, you can't continue with the shopping process because you've been timed out. And I believe that the session timeout is usually 30 minutes. So my suggestion is you extend that because if people 
want to shop during an ad break when they watch TV, 30 minutes isn't enough. Or use Shop Stars. Shop Stars is a little tool that you can use in the shopware community. We've designed it explicitly for that. You can embed it in a uh, counter in a checkout process. Uh, partly it's even free, so it's easy to control. There, there's an automatic extension of your session timeout, 30 minutes and an additional 30 minutes. Additional tip, when you think about adverts, when you want to create customers, think about landing pages, use Shopping World, or to rephrase it, use holistic landing pages. Did, are you familiar with that, holistic landing pages? Are you doing it? Well, holistic means to take everything into account. The user in front of the computer, Aunt Gerda, she doesn't only want to know how beautiful the tile looks, she wants information about the tiles. WPC. Now, what is that Aunt Gerda wonders? So, WBC is much nicer than Bankirai. You can do lots of things with it. You can uh, construct little boxes out of it for your flowers and you can use them as tiles. Create a story. Tell a story. That's content marketing, just like Hagebau does it with the, with the advert. Now I've mentioned all the DIY stores that there are. Control the users into a world or, or bring them into a world with this holistic approach. The rational values go into the background. The user wants to be part of it regardless of whether the product is more expensive than another one. Or why do so many of you own an Apple and not a Samsung. Hmm. That's an example of a wireframe. That's the item page. This is this is from the Gucci suit. And this works with the classic image. What does that mean? The button up there? How about the shoulders? Is it a good shape? What about the sleeves, length, etc.? But when I scroll down, I get more information. So I have something to read. I get information. I can scroll down. The information is important, too, because so many people, we found out by analyzing the scrolling depths, etc., most people want more information, and they don't just want to buy it just like that. Use the force above the fold. Above the fold, the force you have to use. What does that mean? The browser has a certain height. The screen that you see is what you look at first. You don't scroll down 99% of the time. So all the necessary information needs to be above the fold, if you will. That's the area where you need to post all the information that you want customers to see to convince them to buy. If you work in retail, if you're selling things, you would uh, inform them that your size XL is rather an XXL, for example. Another example, this is a customer that we took along on the journey thanks to constant conversion improvement. They had an uplift of 97% because that's exactly what they did, of more than 700% to be exact. Because this is what they did. They had a large image. They had a wonderful landing page. And that led the customer to a shop where they can actually buy the product. The interesting thing is, on the one hand side, there's information, the information that they need. But on the other hand, thanks to this thumbs up guy, there's information. And with this little bit of blue color, this is a great picture. So call to action, emotion, the contact can be established in a simple way. And if I want more information, I can scroll down. Here's the holistic content, etc., etc. This is just a screenshot. Here's another example of an, a page where you get information about the details. Content marketing was connected to other approaches. A video, for example, this nice gentleman explains to us how putting down these tiles actually works. We increased conversion thanks to that because the questions that people have in their heads when they go shopping online how do I put them down? What does it cost? All of that was answered there already on the landing page. Plus all the other things I've mentioned before already. Below the fold, there's more information. All the typical things that we need, technical information or further support videos that uh, try to connect with the customer at exactly the point where they have a question. 
And thanks to us, we have a new indicator, which is the scrolling depth. What happens above the fold? What happens below the fold? And how can I answer the user questions that they have in their minds? How can I avoid cognitive effort for them? How can I get to them before they have to become cognitively active? Tip number five, marketing automation. The most simple way, the simplest way is to go to the user and to get the user on board. If you have more conversions already by that, great. But what happens with the user after they purchase on your page? The upselling, cross-selling, upscaling, etc. That's important because once a customer is your customer, it's easier to make money out of that customer than to gain new ones. That's more expensive. So what about alternative purchasing approaches? And there's such a thing as the marketing automation. The terrace tile, let's stick with that example. It's uh, There's an example after 25th of May, according to the new data act, I sent the customer an email telling them, there's a special offer for you. You have purchased tiles in the past. We have a special offer. And depending on whether the customer reacts or not, I'm able to use a tool, a marketing automation tool, to give the customer another variable, either email A if they've reacted already or email version B if they haven't reacted. And that's an example. There's an authority that was confirmed we are great then the filtering the expectations this is what you could get from us and then maybe we call them if they still haven't budged this is what we've used get response send in blue clever reach and newsletter to go they're all in line with the dsgvo already the new german act on data security adv i've done training on that new act and its requirements for four weeks. I'm an expert now. Tip number six, customer stories, experience. You know what works really well when you watch TV and when you've had your uh, four millionth at break? You include testimonials. You ask customers for a statement and you ask for a, for a recommendation or feedback and you include it in your website. You could do a survey. You could ask your major customers for a testimonial. That enhances the holistic approach. And that is included on the landing page. An example is Fielmann. They produce uh, glasses. The only ad that they did on TV was, where are the glasses from? Fielmann. And they asked people on the street, they filmed their testimonials, and then they got their OK, of course, and uh, put it online or put it into the adverts. And it worked. I'm not sure how many people of you are wearing Fielmann glasses, actually. I don't wear glasses at all. But I was um, assured that the more customers are willing to speak up for you, to, to vouch for you, the more customers you get. Because if people are unsure whether they're right in your shop, they are encouraged. And you develop stories. People like stories. Children at night like their bedtime stories. But just as much our customers like their stories or stories from other customers. Tip seven, cooperation marketing. People tend to leave that out of sight. But basically, it's an agreement between two shops. If both of you sitting right next to each other here, uh, one of you selling the terrace tiles and the other one uh, having a shop selling uh, a barbecue grill, for example, you could cooperate. You could participate in a mutual way. That would be great. In order for you to get an overview of how it works, I invite all of you to register on my website. And there you will get an ebook with 10 basic tips for conversion optimization, which products to use, etc., etc., And of course, you will get this PowerPoint presentation that I've just given of the Shopware Community Day 2018. That brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the day. Yeah, David, thank you for your tips. Um, thank you, David, for all of your tips. The question would be, are there any questions from the audience? And if there are, please use a microphone, otherwise you can't be translated. I'll come to you with the mic. 
question in English? Oh, of course, if you want. Okay, I'm from Holland, and mine oh, cool. is not that good. But, um, you didn't talk about uh, chat functionality. Chat functionalities, yes, yes. okay. Um, that's one possibility. Jet, uh, you mean live chats or something like that, right? Live chat, yeah. Or okay, I think chat possibilities are, um, of course, are probably a good possibility to make more conversion. Of course, yes. It's uh, uh, The thing you have to ask yourself is where can I paste it? on which page. I don't think that it's uh, the right thing to, in to set it on the start page or, or on the c perhaps on the category page. I think the first thing you have to look in your shopware backend is where are the, the most, um, um, how do you call it, you, Loss you, you losses in the conversion, okay? But, but you can answer me in, in, in German if you want. Uh, ich kann in Deutsch antworten. I, I understand. Right, in order to answer the question for everyone, if there's a live chat, if I use a chat window, the question is where do I use it and how do I use it? Where do I position it on my page? To activate visitors, to activate the users, that's yet another thing that would fill another uh, presentation. How long do I stay on one page? That's one question. And where does the user go? Because many have the problem that they exit the page on the listing page, for example. And if I have the chat window, window there, it would have, it would be of more relevance. The user sees it uh, better if it pops up later rather than the window being open from the beginning. Does that answer your question? Wanted to hear. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you for your question. Any more? Noch jemand fragt? Does anybody else have a question? Go ahead, I'm here, I'm here. I'll be happy to take your questions. If not, I have a question. You said above the fold, that was one of your topics, and you looked at a regular computer screen, but many users use mobile phones, maybe even, depending on the page, the majority of visitors. How do I deal with that? What's above the fold in the case of a mobile phone? Do you, because the screen is restricted in size, do you, do you have any tips for that? Right, generally speaking, that's quite a fascinating topic. Many users that use their mobile phone do it at night using their tablets or mobile phones or during a ride, during a journey. So I can generally assume that the user doesn't have much time so the mobile pages need to be short and sweet. I need to have as much information on the mobile uh, pages. But if I, if I look at above the fold, I need to have the call to action above the fold. I need to have the price above the fold without having a holistic approach. But I've already done a lot if I do that. Thank you very much. If there are no further questions. This brings us to the end of this presentation. David, thank you very much. Thank you.